sometimes Eric, I'm animating faces that you can talk to, or I'm talking to faces that you can animate. I'm making faces that you can talk to, they can talk to you, and they'll also be animated. They may have other properties as well. Um, let's demo, let's show what I got done. Recently, even. Okay. Uh, and I need to just go and check that I am actually broadcasting. I'm looking at my other screen. I always like to double check these things. All right. Okay. So I am going. It's working. Um, yeah. So hair color. The hair color can change now. There's this new swatch of different colors that's available here and if i click on one of them my guy gets new hair now skin color we've had for a while um this is just being able to change the color of the hair there's a pretty good palette here i didn't want to make a palette that would have every conceivable hair color that you might hope for because um, there's some other ways that you could, as a creator of faces, get more hair colors. Uh, well, there's one way. No, there's two ways. First, you could complain and, and convince the open source maintainer, me, to add a, a new color or three. Uh, the second way is you can take this thing called uh, the original color and you can uh, create your own art asset that will have the image be the exact color without any uh, adjustment to it. So right now, um, it, it just turns everything blue. The reason it turns it blue though is because those are the base colors that are, are used in the, uh, the assets here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so this guy has got a nice blue face. Um, but let's put him back. Right. It is a little bit strange that when I did this, it changed the skin to blue. So I think there's probably a, a bug there to fix. It should only have changed the, the hair to blue. But that is probably a pretty easy bug to fix. I'll fix it in a moment. Uh, but yeah, we can make quite a few different color changes. Uh, let's see. And uh, yeah, it's all all good. All right, so today, what do I have to do? I have um, applying this recoloration to the eyebrows or whatever hair is in the eyes, the eye acid. Um, and then the same thing for the mouth, even though I don't have any hair colors in the mouth right now. Um, but basically those two assets also need this hair coloring logic in it. And what else was there? The bug that I just noticed. Setting the hair color to original also changes the skin to original. For the head, for the head, not, not the other parts. Okay, I think I can fix that. I'm gonna fix that first. So let's go to this guy here. By the way, it's a lot of work to set up these profiles to be able to change the colors. Uh, very tweaky business. Okay. So if I go to head. Here I said, okay, so this should just be an and instead of an or. Okay, so if we set the hair color to original, there we go, retain the skin. I'll do a commit on that. Okay. 
Okay, next let's go and do, well, one quick thing I'll do. Uh, this other head, I'll add a mask to it so that it can work the same as this other head, the first head. Okay, so there should be three cells here. Right now there's two, one row, two columns in my sprite sheet. Uh, if I take a look at the size of this guy, 800 by 589, that means my width is 400. Let's get out to 1200 to give me one more cell in the sprite sheet. Okay, and then I take this guy uh, duplicate it. Let's call this hair mask. Okay, and then send it two cells over like that. And then I just gotta you know what? That chat is really super stale, so I'm gonna clear that out real quick. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Uh, apologies for the music playing. It's the same automatic thing I've got set up for when I go to the bathroom or when I'm ending the ending the podcast so it just happens automatically when I flip over away from my work screen okay so I want to cut out in this this third cell anything that's not hair or the outlines around hair are fine to keep um, So this mask is what separates the colors that will be, or the pixels that will be um, recolored for hair from the rest of the image. And I've actually got two masks defined for the head, one for skin and one for hair. The other thing I'll need to do is change the coloration, this blonde hair. So it uses the base palette, which is those, those blue colors. And that will probably get me through. Actually, I don't need even all that stuff, so let's just go here and come back up. Uh, delete. And I'll shave some pixels off this guy. If for no other reason, it means that there'll be less to process when it does the recoloration. But no need to be precise on it, so particularly since this is essentially programmer art. Um, I need the art to look good enough that I, I have some sense of what is achievable with the software, what effect we're moving towards, but I don't need to keep on refining it. 
This is going to be throwaway art. Um, okay. So let's take this color. Now, take this color. Oh, Bettina, you did a lot of gradients here. Bettina is the artist who worked on this. Definitely gonna look not as good when I'm done with it, but that's all right. Like I said, programmer art. Yeah, looks really weird to see the OBS peeking through. Close that up. Okay. So, okay, got that color, good. And take this guy and just blow away. What's there? try to get the get this like I was saying I, I don't need this to be super precise or perfect okay let's go down to the next darker color in fact I'll even use my little guide that I wrote okay so this is the mid-tone I'm going down to shadow Let's just get the rest with smaller edits. saying I don't need to be precise but I know it's just gonna bother me a lot if I've got pixels that are being recolored to like bright red and stuff because I left them in in here so let's just do five more minutes of work to make this not be annoying okay. uh, and I might even 
go down to Deep Shadow. Anything that looks ter terrifically ugly, anything left that's like that. Uh, oops. I just want to get rid of the ugly. That's all. So I, I just I kind of gotta know as I go if I'm going to be capable of making like the beautiful cartoon faces, I think I will be able to. Um, so if I can get like halfway there, then I know I'm in good shape. That either myself or somebody else can take it all the way to the expected standard. See how it looks from out here. Doesn't seem like a bad idea to throw some highlights in there. So I can test them out a little bit. Should be the highlight right there. Come back here. Oh, multiply effect, that's what it is. Okay, normal. Yeah, there we go. Alright, I need smoothing. some variety in the strokes. I'm going to get back to programming pretty quick here. Uh, okay, so let's save that. Let's export that. Come back 
to web face. Let's give us a different head. All right, here we go. Doesn't look bad. Which one's that? That's, uh, yeah, it's ink black. That's pretty nice. That's pretty good. That's not as good, but I'll take it. Yeah, it's like the saturation on this gets pretty bright, but I don't know, it's interesting. And if I go over to here, yeah. And all in all, I think pretty good. Also, I, I think I'm making a certain, yeah, never mind. All right, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going. Um, Eyes. Let's do eyes next. This is going to need a different sprite sheet format. So I'll come back over to here and see what I documented. Some more process. I need to add another column. Okay, this looks like it'll be 768. Okay, then I'll take guy and duplicate it here mask bam and set it to five uh, 30 plus 512 which is going to be 542 here we go uh, and then bottom these I don't need to duplicate again so I'll just delete those and then let's go into here and delete whatever is not here remember to, to delete the the outside pixels because I want those pixels to be more influenced by skin recoloring rather than hair recoloring
I try to go fast on this, but if I'm completely honest, I can tell that this is probably going to take the better part of uh, 30 minutes to create the mask. And I don't want to do a shitty job on it because it's a test of the recoloring. Four thirty seven now. Let's see if I can be done by five with this photoshopping. I mean I won't go any faster than I already am, but So I was listening to an interview with Jonathan Blow the other day, and uh, I learned something that was pretty gratifying, which is that uh, his team at Thecla had worked on automated lip animation uh, based upon not motion capture, like myself. He he had identified some problems with using motion capture as a technique, uh, but on just speech audio as an input. And that's the nice way to do it. That's the, for me, it's been the holy grail for decades. Um, his team was not successful. Now, it might be that if Thecla were to look at what I had accomplished um, on this project, which does the same thing they were trying to do, I might say, oh, that's not good enough for us. Like maybe I'm just simply uh, accepting a lower standard of success than they did. But it does give me just a little bit of uh, smug satisfaction to know that um, I probably solved a problem that some talented people in another company were not not able to uh, even then that's that's kind of a shitty way of saying it um, because they probably are able to solve it. it just would take them more time than they've been wanting to spend um, but yeah I did something that was hard that's, that's, that's all. That's all I'm saying. I did something that was hard. It's hard for other people. It's not trivial. I figured out how to do it. Not everybody can do it. Uh, a lot of the initial ideas you get on how to do it will prove to be wrong. Uh, as I know, I ran into those dead ends. But uh, what I've got now, it works great. And I've used other software that claim to do what my software does, and it did not work that well. Multiple times I've gone looking. Let's see, what is the state of the art on this particular front? Uh, I'm not saying that I found like every possible thing that was out there. There might have been something that was as good or better than my solution, but every time I looked at it, I didn't find it. Tune Boom Harmony, uh, Adobe, various Adobe products, just not that good. Um, the things people usually try. Uh, amplitude mapping, where you just kind of open the mouth wider when there's more volume, more amplitude. Uh, loudness, amplitude is maybe not the right word because the uh, in a, in a uh, audio wave it'll jump up and down quite a bit, and what you really mean is like the loudness over a period of time. Um, so, anyways, anyways, so so that's that's one approach is you just say when the sound gets louder or the speech audio, you open up the mouth more. Call it the uh, Teddy Ruxpin algorithm. 
since there used to be a little stuffed animal that worked exactly the same way as that and you put audio cassettes in it and it's its mouth would uh, open up wider when it got louder just doesn't look very convincing because when we speak we do much more than open our mouth wider or uh, narrower and also there's times when your mouth can be a like mostly closed, but still generate a, like a lot of loudness. Um, a better approach is analyzing analyzing the speech audio for phonemes. It's actually a lot better. Uh, you can look at some audio and say, here's where an S sound is, here's where a P sound is, and you can display the corresponding animation frame, the visine, uh, that goes along with that, that sound, the phoneme. Um, but that's missing something too. That's missing guesswork and stylization, which is performed in traditional lip animation um, meaning if I say to you up I just go up and that that's the actual audio that comes out of my mouth or that's the the part of the audio that you have access to there could be more to it but just a little bit up you have no idea what word I was trying to say and you can't stylize the animation to make that presentation of that word, uh, the lip animation, look more like what I'm trying to say. Um, but if I say, how are you doing? Then even though the H is, is not there, how are you doing? And oftentimes in speech, in recorded speech, you won't get the, the uh, that phoneme that goes with the word uh, so, so even even though the, the actual phoneme isn't there you can guess from the context of the whole thing that that first word is how and then you can break down the word how and say well how would have a, an H phoneme in it and uh, from there you can just kind of add back in the missing sound that wasn't actually there in the audio um, so that's the big leap that you can make with speech recognition. And that's what my algorithm does. Uh, motion capture is better than phoneme detection. So it gets a little bit closer but it does not have a capacity to stylize. Um, so what it could do, motion capture, is accurately reproduce what an actor in the real world, what their face looks like while they're saying the audio. But that's not stylized, meaning there's no additional flourish to the animation or no additional information added um, than the artist would give it. There's no exaggeration on certain biasings that are more valuable to display than others. Um, so I can tell you that if I'm animating and the character makes the, the F noise, I really want to show the F noise, or I really want to show the F visine or lip animation frame, um, because it it doesn't come up that often in animation compared to the other visines, but well, I mean that the value comes from it uh, not being shown that often. So when you do get a chance to show it, you want to show it. Um, it'll register more readily on. Uh, 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 on the viewer's perception, in the viewer's perception. Um,
So motion capture is like a muted version. A muted version of what stylized lip animation produces. So basically my algorithm has got guessing and stylization and uh, uh, a strong correlation between what the animated character was, uh, was saying with the individual phonemes. Uh, let's see, I think that's wrong. Here, let's fix this. I'm about halfway done with this. It's 4.48. So maybe my original estimate is a little bit behind schedule. That's all right. I'm not going to speed up. I'm going to get this done about the same rate. Uh, but it looks like I'm about halfway through. not lost to me that all this pixel editing takes a lot of time but instead of being demoralized by it because I, I, I may have to do a lot more of this right um, before I'm done um, instead of being demoralized by it I'm kind of inspired by it um, because the wisp face authoring allows you to reuse parts and even the set of eyes that I've been working on seems to be uh, I only have one even just one seems to be heavily reusable across a wide variety of faces so if you spend a fair amount of time getting one asset to look great you get to reuse that great looking asset. Um, and I know that it is possible to make these assets I've got now look you know, 50% better or something like that. Uh, it's just, Spending more time on it and probably somebody else spending more time on it. But if the engine that serves these assets is ready to combine them all in different ways, then uh, you know that's that's gonna make it so we can create a lot of good looking faces. Oh, I've got Nico Mooley music stuck in my head. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. Nico Mooley? Nico Mooley? Nico Mooley? Nico? Now, 
I am coming to the tail end of uh, face functionality, which is awesome. There's a lot more to this thing to get into. Uh, I've got some code already to bring in, which is for editing uh, dialogue. And uh, hoping sometime in the early part of 23 to have some demos up where you can actually talk to characters. Uh, and just be something you load into your browser. Thinking about different ideas for these demos. One idea I had was guy who sounds depressed but is not depressed. Just somebody who just, just talks really slow and sad, but he's in a good mood, you know? <laughs> it's, just, it's like, yeah, my life is great. Everything's going my way. I'm really happy. Uh, and I've got like another one, which is just some skeevy guy outside of a convenience store and he just wants you to hold his bag while he goes inside the grocery store. And he's very persistent about it. And you don't know this guy, he's just a stranger. He just says, will you, will you hold my bag just for a moment? I just want to go inside. Now you can, you, the player, you can say, no, I don't want it, I don't want it. And then he'll respond back, no, come on, just for a moment. Just, just for a brief moment. Just, could you please, could you just, just please just hold my bag? There's nothing wrong with it. But don't look inside of it. Don't look inside the bag. Uh, so that, that's what I think I'll do with these demos is just a lot of really short scripts, which are an interaction with one character. Just to see what works and what's fun. There's stuff like I could make it so the mood of the character improves if you use the same kind of words that he does. Um, I can make dating simulators. Uh, I want it to be comedy though. I want like everything to be kind of funny. I think that's the easiest territory. And also I, I just really have an urge to make things that are just funny. Like I, I, I did a bunch of stuff where I want a big powerful story with you know, really kind of cool ideas in it and things like that. And I sort of got like a, a different urge. Just like, can I just make some jokes? Can I make stuff that causes people to laugh? And there's something funny about a character on your screen insistently wanting to communicate with you. Um, it, and you will just literally talk to this thing. Uh, and you don't have to be convinced. What I'm looking for is something that is not convincing you that you're talking to a, a, a human being. It's not a Turing test, but something that gives you the feel. What I've discovered from the past is that, uh, different art I've created, is that the feel is elusive, but Cumulative, meaning if you do enough things right, it clicks in. Part of the reason why I, I didn't go and make a whole bunch of demos of the speech recognition stuff, which works, is I knew that there was a, a cumulative effect to get that, that uh, sense of talking to something, talking to someone. Uh, and one of the things is like the face needs to have some verisimilitude 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 it's got to seem kind of real or at least compelling you know or it's got to seem like it's expressing uh, emotions in a way that 
matches what real people would. And other things are uh, allowing for interruption on both sides for the computer character to interrupt you when you're speaking and for you to interrupt the character. I think I've got that solved, but it's like you have to take this bundle of techniques and combine them together in such a way that the overall result doesn't convince the player that they're talking to something, but convinces them to play along, that it's, it's worth their time and it's enjoyable to play along. Because it's kind of ridiculous to, to stare at a face on a screen and talk to it. There's got to be enough there that you say, okay, I'll do this, I'll do this. Um, when you're talking to something like Siri or uh, Alexa, there's not enough there for you to really play along. Not for more than a few minutes, you know. You say, like, Alexa... Am I the smartest person? And then Alexa, you know, it'll be like three seconds later and she'll say something like, maybe you are, or human intelligence is highly variable. Or, you know, there'll be some kind of like smart ass question that somebody at Amazon typed in. I'm not any better with what I'm saying now to do as far as like the level of intelligence put into the response. But what I think I can do better is the mechanics of the interaction itself. So for one thing, all my speech recognition is local. There is no round trip to go off to a server, store your, your utterances on a server someplace to be spied upon. But more importantly, uh, the downside of just that wait time, that round trip. Um, okay, I got through the mask on all the hair, cool. Okay, so I have my hair mask over here. Let's save this baby and export it. Okay, go to, uh, not here, but Wisp Public Parts. Billy Eyes, replace Billy Eyes. Replace them. Do it. All right. So replace the eyes. Let's get this encoded. Let's get it working. Go into eyes. And uh, this is one of the more complicated, complicated uh, bits of rendering code. So it's going to take a while for me to dig into and get it working. Um, just to start though, let's make sure it's dealing well with the uh, new dimensions of this, this sprite sheet. Okay. Okay. Calc is that? No. Uh, where's the emotionals? I gotta go to unload. Okay. This is a render. So unload. Got a load bitmaps here. It's all of the bitmaps right here. Let's go look at this function. Okay. Image to left and right irises. That should stay the same. Lid should stay the same. It's this emotionals. Generate emotionals. Okay. Emotional. Generate emotional data. This is definitely the most complex face part to render. Okay. So generate emotional data. Image to overlay bitmap. That this is this is the one. Okay. So we say uh, skin mask, and then let's do another one. X hair mask equals uh, twice the width of the eyes. Okay. 
and I kind of like doing this. In a more explicit way, we'll say we're going to return three bitmaps. There we go, that's better TypeScript. Okay. Then here we're going to grab the hair mask. Since I'm doing this calculation twice, it seems correct for me to just. I'm doing it twice, so I'm doing it three times now. Let's just do it one time. And we've simplified the code and reduced the amount of computation. Okay. So that might be enough to at least show it, show the status quo working. Uh, it looks like it was. Okay. Okay. So now I need to do something with this other bitmap that got returned. So just for people that join later, uh, I'm bringing my hair recoloring code so it works with the eyebrows. Uh, I did notice one thing I forgot to do in the asset. I need to set these eyebrows to be the base color or uh, the base colors that are they're like the source color that's expected for the color transformations that are performed. So if I come back to this asset, I, over here I need to set these white eyebrows to use the base colors. Pretty easy to do. This will take me not nearly as long as it took to do those previous edits. Hey, I just said that and jinxed myself, I'm sure, but I don't know. I think it's not going to take too long. I just got to color in these brows. All right, so then come back here. What we got? Uh, my base palette. Uh, Midtone. Take the mid-tone and then um, paste it into here. Then let's take our wand. A uh, little more tolerance. Uh, more tolerance than that because I don't see these pixels picking up yet. 35. Jeez. Uh, Come on. There you go. Um, okay. So if I set the multiply effect on, they'll stop me from overwriting the, the line on the outside. Uh, so for that, we go... Okay, there, let's go to the pencil tool. I can cover more ground faster. Okay, and then change you to multiply. That will make it so that you won't override the black pixels. Okay, yeah, this is gonna go much, much faster. Okay, wand, bam. Let's just, let's just get them all. Get them all in one, one fell swoop. Okay. Just setting the mask. The mask will be the area that uh, my changes are restricted to. And I only want to color inside the eyebrows. If little kids had this ability, like five-year-olds, Coloring books just they wouldn't be any any fun. You, or they wouldn't take much skill. You just don't do that. Oops. And then you'd be done.
This is the same color range as, as down here on the skin, but because I've got the mass set up off to the right, the engine will know like which parts are skin versus uh, hair. So let's recoloring the algorithm. Okay. Those are the backs of the eyes or the, the whites of the eyes, you might say. And these guys there, and then the irises and the lids. And those make up the rig up for the eyes. Okay, save that. Export that. It's the parts. Okay, Billy Eyes. Bam. Okay. Okay, and then back to code. First of all, let's make sure nothing's broken. Okay, that's good. It's showing the base color there. Uh, so I pulled that in. So now I want to perform the recolorization on this base color is uh, my starting colors to get to this color. I've got code that does it for the head, but I need to do something similar over on this side. Okay, so image overlay bitmap it came in here. Now I've got an extra one. Hair mask bitmap. That's the third one that I just added. Okay. Um, a uh, tricky thing is I will need an extra canvas context. Uh, oops. So we'll say mask context canvas rendering context 2D. Uh, these parameters are getting hard to keep track of, so I'll bring them down to multi-line. Okay. So, recolor profile. I need there to be passed a skin recolor profile and a hair recolor profile. Let's invert this. We'll say, oh, wait a minute. The way for me to keep this straight is to grab from here. This stuff right here. Okay. And then come back to eyes and then just have this available as a reference for me to look at. The same screen. I could have split the screen in two, but on the stream it's a little bit tougher for me to have a double double. Is it is it really? No. I'm Doubting what I just said. Uh, here, let's go back to the head. Split and move right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I can just reference it on the screen like that. That is actually better. Okay. So, key things here. kind of wonder why why I put this up here it seems like it should be down here instead yeah it really should okay so let's do this so let me say skin recolor bitmap it'll come down here
Okay, and then here we'll check for skin recolor profile. Yeah, this is going to be much better actually. don't need it to be at this level okay so the other one is hair recolored bitmap that goes there Get rid of these two. Okay, that's cleaner. And I'm also thinking like this is not needed because, yeah, in fact, yeah, it would have done nothing at all. Okay, this is cleaner. All right, let's just follow the same pattern over here. Um, Okay, if there's no recoloring, then we'll just say the overlay bitmap is equal to this. Otherwise, we'll say if skin recolor profile, then we'll do that. We'll do the skin recoloring. Let's do const skin recolored bitmap. Okay. And this is going to be skin recolor profile. Uh, yeah, so that's fine. Don't need that. Global comps operation. Okay, now we're doing mask stuff. Mask context. Bam. Source over. Uh, draw. Image skin mask bitmap zero zero. Good. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the same. Okay, but these should all be. This needs to be set. image and it has to go from the mask mask context canvas okay
Oh, I don't need to say zero, zero, that's implied. Okay. No, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Okay, pre-render, draw image, mass contact canvas, zero, zero, okay. Okay, then, The, the logic here is just weird enough that I should probably refactor this out. So I'm having to write extra code because there's no function that just returns. Um, but just to kind of keep things simple, I won't be dry to begin with. I'll just put everything that needs doing in each of the, the two sections. Um, okay, so that means Pre-render context uh, gets the mass drawn to it. And then I need something that draws the original underneath of it all. Okay, okay. Free render context. Uh, original. What, 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 what is it? What is it exactly? The overlay bitmap. I think that's what it is. No, no, that's not it. Yeah. Hey. Okay, what am I doing? First I draw the skin mask bitmap. And it says source over and that means that like the, I don't know, it probably doesn't matter that much actually, just uh, it's just copying everything. Okay, and then source in. I draw the skin recolored bitmap onto the mask and because it's got source in it's only going to copy over the pixels from skin recolor bitmap that are present in the context already that we got there by the skin mask bitmap blip okay so at this point i'm looking at the mask context having just the skin in it. I draw it to the pre-render context. Um, don't need to do that yet, but I do need to take what, what, what is the, not the skin recolor bitmap, but the original bitmap. bitmap okay so this this draws what does this do this takes with whatever's in the mass context and just puts it into the pre-rendering context okay and then and then I take the original and drop it on top of that. But I shouldn't do that yet. I shouldn't do that yet. Uh, no, this one here. This one here I shouldn't do until after both of these have made it through because I need the information from uh, the hair color splitting as well. All right. Uh, this is a little complex. Okay, let's 
simplify this a little bit by saying const is recoloring equals uh, the inverse of this. Okay, so we'll say Yeah, okay, that's that's gonna be a little simpler. Yank that out. And then down here I say if we're recoloring, then I'll do this extra step of uh, drawing the original bitmap underneath what has been blit by the masking operations above. Uh, okay. Otherwise, we just say that the overlay bitmap, it doesn't need any changes at all. It's just going to be uh, the original bitmap. And for this overlay bitmap here, I gotta get that from the, the pre-render context, okay. Okay, now what remains is for me to do the hair color logic. And it's gonna be pretty similar. All right, stepping through this, get recolor, get a recolored version of the original bitmap. Okay, draw the hair mask, then draw with source in combining uh, the the recolor bitmap with the mask. I just have the hair pixels there. Then. copy those pixels from the mask context into the pre-rendered context, but they'll be destination over, which means um, they'll draw underneath what's already there. They won't overwrite what's already there. Okay, now just for a moment, I was thinking like, I need to reset the global composite operation where I'm done. Uh, otherwise, there's going to be some weird effects. Down here, does it matter? I don't think so. I think it's fine. Okay. All right, that's a lot, and still not doesn't have all the plumbing. OK. 
Okay, so generate emotional data. You will need more information. You will need skin recolor profile. the order up here so pre-render oh mask before pre-render okay And this is what I mean by plumbing. Just making sure that uh, correctly. Here we go. Mass context. Might be enough. Let's see what are the complaints. Any complaints? Nope. I'm clear on the right. No squiggles. a 12% chance of working the first time. I just feel like there's just too many things that could have gone wrong there. I just, I don't think it's going to be right the first time. Ah, oh, man, it's way off, isn't it? Yeah, it's like not doing any of the... Oh, I regressed on the head stuff, too? Okay. 
rest on the head too. Wow. So I did make a few changes on the head side. They must have been breaking changes. Let's just see what I did. Seems so benign. Maybe this is this destination over thing that I took out. Is that possible? Well, one thing I could do. Just revert the head and see if it if it starts working all of a sudden. Uh, but I prefer to just do one at a time to see if that makes a difference. So this was where pre-render context draw image mass context. Yeah, it was right here. Doesn't seem right to me. It seems like that wouldn't make the change. Let's, but let's let's check. In a moment, the face is going to reload. Okay, it's still Fukaka. Um, okay. So I will go into here and just copy all this over here. But then it's not the best place to copy it uh, since I'm about ready to overwrite this file. Let's put it in scratch. And let's just get the whole function. Okay. Okay, then get check out. Regressing on the other code. Okay, so that fixed it. What's what's the difference there? Uh, the eyes are still messed up. But I'll get to the eyes. Uh, move that to the right. Okay. So this is eyes. Uh, let's go to head. Okay, this is head. thing I really want to do is have this stuff be in here.
how that oops Oh yeah, okay, so then down here, this becomes a declaration. Okay, now why wouldn't this work? This seems like it, it's like a identical code change kind of a thing. Um, and let's come back and see how it reloads. Did you already reload just now? Oh, I don't like that. Okay. What is the difference? I mean, logically, it just seems the same. Is it that it's happening before this global composite operation? That could be. That could be. Bring this down to here. Because this recolor uses the pre render. confused get it. Let's undo. There's the clear context. Show me if that works. Okay, that works. Okay. Is it this clear context? Is that what's going on? I mean, if I... If I put this underneath is that what causes an issue it does cause an issue okay why would that be I'm setting all the pixels to zero, zero. Like all zeros, alpha two. That's it, okay. Yeah, I don't, I just don't get it. Why would you fail in that case but succeed if I clear afterwards? Why? Okay. 
I don't know. Oh, my time is running out. Okay. So it's a bit of a mystery, but... I'm just going to accept the mystery for now. Don't like doing that, but I'm going to. And come back and fiddle with this more. Okay, so coming up to here. Let's assume the same kind of trouble. So what did it used to do? Okay. So the lids are fine. Um, it looks like there's some kind of overblitting going on. Like where all the different eyebrows get blit and some of them are, are showing again. Um, skin on the overlay is not being updated. Let me see. Console log is recalling. I just want to know which of the two it's going through. Okay, well, that, that's, that's going to help. That will help. Um, it looks like you tried to... Combine them together into null? What the hell? Not equal null. More hair in your color. Not equal null. Um, the other thing you need to do if is recoloring, let's clear the mask. Clear context, mask, context. Oh, it is already cleared up above. Maybe I need to clear it again. for down here. Of these, I think, are for uh, loading in all the thumbnails. These ones seem to be like they're for this.
Okay, so it is going through that path. Cool. And weirdly, it looks like I've got actually a little bit of it being drawn correctly. Um, and this is just really strange. So let's get one thing working at a time. Okay, I see some multi-draw type stuff. I should be able to fix that. But it's so strange because I, I cleared the pre-render, I cleared the mask. Is it left and right? Part of my trouble is I can't see the image data on the different surfaces. I don't have any visibility on that. Uh, 10 minutes till six. I've just got to admit that I'm not going to get this done in this session. I hate, I hate that, but uh, I think that's where I'm at. So I gotta go downstairs and make some dinner. Or order some dinner, one of the two. Uh, uh, I don't know, it's just a bad session. I don't get to win. Don't get to end in victory. Ah, uh, hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. All right, I'll have to do this tomorrow. Right. Okay, I'm gonna stop the stream right about here. Stop in the stream. Failure, defeat. <laughs>